I think that uh, during the prior session, somebody mentioned the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. And I've been implicated in that as part of the Committee for Development Policies. I see some other members of the committee. And, uh, <clears throat> and the whole idea is that uh, the MDGs, they, at least in my view, they generated uh, unexpected, unexpectedly positive results, perhaps because of China, but also because of uh, the changes in policies of the donors and in the public expenditure in developing countries. Now, <clears throat> the SDGs, uh, I found, they are framed in an exhortational way, so that uh, nobody should be left behind. I mean, of course, it's true. And at the same time, I teach macroeconomics, and then I see that there are financial crises, that the inequality is worsening, and uh, so, so the question is, it, will they made it? Because I, I mean, I, I was not sure that they could made it in, uh, for the MDGs. The MDGs they made because China made a huge progress, but uh, Africa was not uh, on schedule on, on everything. So uh, <clears throat> we tried to see whether, what is the consistency between the, the SDG goals, particularly SDG number one, which is eradication of poverty by the year 2030. In doing that, we built, um, no, not a model, but basically we, we enlarged the Bourguignon decomposition by adding something else in a way so as to bring in also population and uh, the ratio of food prices to consumer price index. And then we simulate uh, the, the variables, which are growth, uh, growth plus uh, improvement in population policies, which means the, uh, the, the per capita is smaller and inequality, and then we look at food prices, uh, simulating whether they should be stable in relation to inflation or not. And what is the basic, now, what do we simulate? Well, we simulate the best possible improvement which we have observed during the last 30 years. For instance, for inequality, the largest uh, improvement we saw was in Brazil between 1998 and 2012, which was about 15% from the beginning, from the initial period. Uh, for growth, we take the IMF uh, growth projection to 2022, and then we extend it to 2030, because I mean, nobody knows what, what will be growth in these countries in 2030. And for population, we do the same. We say, well, we take the medium variant of the United Nations population projection, and we say, which, uh, which is the country which improved, reduced the fastest population growth? Well, during the last 30 years, China. So, and then we assign to every single country the, the, of the 78 countries which are uh, poverty bigger than, uh, than zero in, 19, in, sorry, in 2015 or 13. And then we see <clears throat> if with these improvements, actually they can uh, eradicate poverty. And the answer is, well, uh, many African countries and some Latin American countries actually do not, meet, do not hit the target. So out of 78 countries, depending on the, what are the, the values you simulate, um, between 20 and 30, they are not there. And they are not there in particular because the, the growth projections by the IMF are extremely anemic. And they come up with, uh, for instance, for Latin America, 2%. For Africa, 3%. And population growth is 2.5%. So, so basically, the, the eradication, my view is that the eradication of poverty raises a growth issue. And uh, in many developing countries, particularly in Africa, I mean, I think that uh, the, the way the, the debate is going on is ignoring, uh, to a large extent, uh, uh, growth. And it takes into account inequality, population, and so on and so forth, but it ignores growth. Now, to do that, um, we <clears throat> go back to the evolution of the measurement of poverty. So poverty at count ratio, I think that uh, Martin, I saw him here somewhere, uh, you will remember that um, in, uh, back in the 90s, there was a paper by Lee Square and Zhou, which was saying, well, uh, inequality is constant over time. So poverty, basically, which is... Uh, delta z over z minus 1 depends on yc, uh, delta yc over c1, so growth. So in order to <coughs> eradicate poverty, you must grow. Then uh, there is the, the um, Bourguignon decomposition, and so we see that the poverty depends on the level of the poverty line, which we will keep constant, depends on growth and distribution. Now, if you split... <coughs> the population per capita, uh, growth per capita and population and population growth per capita, then you have three elements. 
And then well, this is done normally at current prices. Uh, and, uh, and normally, uh, if you look uh, at countries where the, the food price rises faster than the consumer price index, and then you take into consideration that the poor consume more food than the others, the poverty line is biased. So we introduce a ratio just as a scholar, which is the, uh, so we, we found it empirically, and there we show it, that Gini rises by another two points if the food price index rises by 25% more than the consumer price index. Now, this is the Bourguignon, the, the, the growth effect and the, the distribution effect. So basically, in explicit term, <coughs> we get that the, the poverty, uh, the change in uh, the poverty at count ratio <coughs> depends negatively on alpha, uh, on the growth rate, and then and the growth rate of the population, uh, positively on the growth rate of the population. And then, uh, it, of course, if Gini rises, in, uh, poverty will rise, but Gini falls. And then we had the scala, that, so uh, an omega, which is in Gini terms, uh, which is normally two points if uh, the FPI rises by more than 25% and that. Mm -hmm. Where do I get the coefficients? I don't estimate anything. I go to Kakwani and Son, which I think is a very nice paper. We assume that uh, <clears throat> his own elasticities, which are this one, so the, uh, you know, they're tabulated on uh, uh, theoretical distributions, uh, the alpha and the beta, so for different level of genies and for different ratios of Z, which is the poverty line divided by GDP. So if you are in a country of 0.33, means that there's quite a bit can be redistributed. If you have a Z, YC, which is equal to one, it means the poverty line is equal to GDP per capita, so there is not much to be redistributed. And then we do that for the poverty elasticity of growth, and then we do that for the poverty elasticity of inequality. And then the red ones, elasticities, are those that are the biggest. So you will see that in countries where Z over YC is low, uh, the elasticity is much bigger, so you, you, there is plenty to be redistributed, you know. And then in the countries where <coughs> uh, the Z over YC is very low, is very high, not close to one, then actually the, the, there is no escape than growing. Um, now, what are the data? Well, for GDP, we said we used the IMF W uh, World Economic Outlook 2017, and uh, <coughs> which go to 2022, then we extend, we adopted the same uh, growth rate uh, to the year 2030. Now, what do they show? Well, it shows a rapid expansion of Asia. Asia is assigned an 8% growth rate. Latin America, 3.3. And, <clears throat> and main, uh, so basically, the, the assumption that we made, which reflect what the IMF says, is 2% growth for Latin America, 3.3 for, for Africa, Black Africa, and MENA. And main includes Pakistan and uh, Afghanistan, 2.1% for the uh, CIS country, and then <clears throat> sustained growth for the uh, Asian countries. Now, party line, 190 per day in 2011 PPPs, and the World Bank data that probably been cooked up by Martin in uh, uh, two the incidence of poverty at count ratio in 2013. I don't know if there are updates, but this is what we used. And then the Gini data. The Gini data, I mean, as a producer of Gini data myself, I would have liked to use the World Income Inequality Database of WIDER. But WIDER has a lower coverage than the Global Consumption and Income Project, which produces data which are quite different, but they are standardized, you know, so in a way. So the standardization uh, ensures uh, covering a bigger number of countries, but brings in some biases, which we have tested. Population data, medium variant of the population prospect, and the food price index uh, divided by CPI, we took it from a study we did uh, for 18 African countries, which is, uh, no. Oh, okay, I will, when you come back. Now, uh, on inequality, <clears throat> Which data did we simulate? Well, there is the Latin American miracle. Well, this is the, the trend in the Gini coefficient um, up to 2015. So you see that from uh, 2002 to 2015, there is a huge drop. And that not all the countries, they fall at the same speed, but uh, Brazil, particularly the southern cone, uh, Brazil, Argentina, Uruguay, they, they have a, a major decline. 
So we looked at um, country by country, we say which, is, which one is the best, and it looked like it was Brazil, 1998-2012. Now things are changing probably a little bit, but this was like a 15% decline from my level. And then we applied this rate of decline to, to all the 78 countries. Now, um, growth rate of the population. Uh, now, this is the southern, the, the basically is a point which normally is ignored in the debate. And I think that uh, uh, my view is that it should be brought in into the development debate for poverty eradication. So you see that Sub-Saharan Africa, basically, there is no decline in growth rate of the population between the 80s and 2015. Mainly, there is a decline, and the others are all on the, on the way down. And uh, <clears throat> so we use this uh, growth rate. And now, this is total fertility. So South, Southeast, Southeastern Asia, the red line. China, the yellow line, and then total fertility also in Europe and Latin America and Northern Africa, same. Now, this is Africa, fertility in Africa. Now, I've been to Niger in, two, in 2007 to study the, one of the latest famine. And Niger, despite the fact that it has a famine every two or three years, basically has rising fertility over time. And that, that is something which is difficult to understand. I mean, or microeconomically, you can explain it. But there is a sort of a huge contrast between uh, collective well-being and individual decisions. Africa is falling, but it's falling slowly. And Nigeria, which is a large country, uh, is falling very shortly. Now, Africa, however, presents um, uh, some good examples of declining inequality. Well, the main one is Rwanda, the red line. So basically, this fertility rate goes from 8 to 4 in 15 years. And Ethiopia, as well, as shows a very large decline in uh, fertility. So uh, <clears throat> what we, we, did we simulate TFR? No, we simulated population growth. Which one did we take? Well, we took the medium variant projections from the United Nations Population Division, and we applied to that a minus 13% to the year 2030. Why? Because this is what happened in China, which was one of the, the countries which recorded the fastest population growth. Now, for the ratio, this is what we had estimated. So you have on the horizontal axis X, which is the, the ratio of food price index to consumer price index, and, um, and the changes in Gini. So there are two first differences. You know? So you see that if the, the food price index rises by 20%, 25%, which is the maximum we have seen, Gini goes up by one, one and a half point almost. And then we say, OK, two points. Okay? So if you uh, have a penalty, if food price index rises faster than population, uh, than consumer price index. Now, we simulated uh, <clears throat> this in the following way. We took the elasticities which correspond to the initial values of the variables in the countries. And, uh, um, and we take them initially as constant. Then we simulate growth and inequality, and if, if we inc include uh, improvements both in inequality and growth, then, then we endogenize the elasticities, then they become more favorable, basically. You know? So Gini dropped 20%, population slower than 13%, the food price index assumed no change in, uh, uh, first, no change or change by 2030. Now, these are the results. What do they show? Well, show that you have 78 countries in total. And if, uh, <clears throat> and these are, the first column is the distribution. 41 are in Africa, in sub-Saharan Africa, 15 in Latin America, 6 in Asia, and so on and so forth. So first scenario, only IMF. Will, will we eradicate um, poverty by 2030 with the growth rate that the IMF has estimated? And we see that the impact, the marginal effect is minus 14. So only 14 countries that will grow out of poverty with no other changes. Then we say, well, uh, we do growth plus 13% slower population growth. And we see that the marginal effect is close to, close to zero. It's minus one, only one country. And then we say, oh, Cornea, you are uh, having, a, I'm almost done. Uh, you are having a sort of a, you have, uh, now, why, why does it happen? It took us a while. Now, if you go to Angola, for instance, the increase in population projected to the year 2030 by the United Nations Population Division is plus 60% in relation to 2015. So if you take away 13% of a very large increase, the fact is very small. 
which means that you have to keep population policies in place for longer or have bigger decline than those recorded in China. Then we say, okay, at Gini, and the, the fact of the Gini is, so Gini takes away 13 countries out of poverty. Then we endogenize, so we, we, since we improve GDP per capita and, <clears throat> and reduce the Gini, then we endogenize that. So we reduce, the, we change the elasticity, the alpha and the beta. We see that another 13. So despite all that, there are still 37 out of 78 countries which they're not hitting the target. Then you say, oh God, 37 out of 78. So these uh, SDGs are exhortational, but basically they're not, not uh, consistent with what goes on in the real economy. And then, so what the, we said, well, okay, perhaps it, there is a growth problem. So let us increase the growth rate by one point, one, one percent in relation to what the IMF has simulated. And you see that there is, in effect, nine, nine countries that exit poverty with an additional growth of one uh, percent. Uh, but still, you're, you're still remaining there, you know. And uh, <clears throat> so, by and large, I mean, with all the simulation, uh, uh, and uh, sorry, and then the last one, the last column, we assume that uh, this happens with no changes in food prices in relation to the consumer price index. So if we do that, uh, basically you see that you, you, still, you still get stuck with 14, 14 countries out of 78, which do not make it. But this under very optimistic <laughs> hypothesis about inequality, population, growth, et cetera, et cetera. And this brings me to the composition. You see the, the, um, the brown are the Latinos at the beginning and then the, the blue one are the Africans. So in the end, uh, in scenario six, you see that I think there is one Latino which, uh, let, from Latin America, which is Haiti. And then they are mostly from Africa, Sub-Saharan Africa. So what does this tell me? Well, it tells me that, uh, <clears throat> that uh, well, there is a growth issue. I mean, at least for the countries that uh, are uh, um, uh, even in scenario number six, uh, with all these positive hypotheses, it will be impossible to uh, uh, exit poverty unless you grow faster. Now the question is, which growth? Uh, and I think that uh, while everybody is in agreement about reducing poverty, there is no agreement about the pattern of growth. So uh, some examples, when, for instance, we in another work we did, I mean, uh, uh, we see that uh, trade liberalization in Malawi as basically increased inequality. And so, so the, 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 my, my main conclusion is that SDGs are inconsistent with, uh, with uh, for many countries, with, um, with the achievement of the eradication of poverty by the year 2030. And, uh, and, uh, and that brings us back to the old uh, tried problem of uh, what type of growth. And I think that with the current pattern of growth, which has, reduced growth rate in Africa and Latin America tremendously by, according to the IMF, we will, we will not make it. We have uh, uh, um, comments on which policies are needed, but uh, I think I should stop here, otherwise the chair will beat me up. Thank you.